a fish that grew up in chemical waste mutated and turned into a hideous monster with the strength of a dinosaur. The story begins in 2000 at a US military base in South Korea. An American pathologist is outraged by the dust on the formaldehyde bottles. He orders his assistant to disregard the regulations and pour hundreds of bottles down the drain, as the dirty containers are unusable. The young man objects, because this way the toxic substance will get into the Han River, but the American forces him to comply. A couple of days later, two men are fishing in the Han River and catch a strange mutated creature. Suddenly it bites one of the fishermen and swims away free. Four more years later, an upset man stands on the edge of a bridge over the Han River. He gazes intently into the water, notices something large and dark, and with the words idiots, this is the end jumps off the bridge. The plot shifts to a grocery store on the banks of the Han River. Behind the counter we see a sleeping man named Gang Du. He is supposed to help his father Hippon run the establishment, but he rather causes him problems because of his peculiarities. Jean Du's daughter named Hyunso returns from school. She is upset because her uncle is the only one who came to visit her on parents' day, moreover, in a drunken state. Hyunso distracts herself from her school problems and prepares to watch her aunt Namju's archery championship. Hyunso and Jandu turn on the TV and see a story about a man who threw himself into the Han River. The girl quickly switches to the sports channel, and they wait with her father for the competition to begin. Hippon pulls his son away from watching the championship and sends him off to attend to another customer, while he is seated in front of the TV with Hyunso. Jandu walks up to the customers near the shore and sees a huge creature floating under the bridge. Suddenly it dives into the water and swims toward the shore. The curious people want to examine the monster and come even closer to the water. They begin to throw food and various objects at the mysterious creature, but the monster goes deeper underwater. The onlookers are already beginning to disperse when suddenly Jandu notices that the creepy creature, which looks like a mutated fish, has come ashore and is now running straight into the crowd. The deranged monster attacks the people, devouring them one by one. The residents panic and run as far away from the shore as possible. But the mutant fish is not stopping. Jean Du and an American named Donald try to fight the terrifying creature. They fight him with every means available. But Donald has no luck. He is attacked and bitten by the monster. The unsuspecting Hippon and Hyunso finish watching the championship. At the crucial moment, Namju begins to hesitate and fails to shoot in time resulting in only a bronze medal instead of victory. Upset, Hyunso comes out of the store and sees the crowd running. Suddenly her father grabs her by the arm and drags her along, trying to save her from the monster. But suddenly Jandu stumbles and, falling down, lets go of his daughter's hand. The man quickly rises, automatically picks up the other girl's hand and continues running. After a while, he looks back and is horrified to see that Hyunso was left behind. At the same moment the monster snatches the girl and disappears under the water with her. Jean Du jumps into the river after them, but he is powerless against the huge mutant. The military arrives on the scene and directs all the victims to a temporary shelter. Hippon and Jean Du are joined by Namju and Namil, Hippon's youngest son. The whole family mourns passionately for Hyunso by a memorial wall with pictures of the victims. Namil blames his brainless brother for what happened, because if he hadn't mistaken his daughter for another girl, Hyunso would still be alive. <laughs> People in yellow protective suits enter the hall and demand to know which people were at the scene of the accident. Almost everyone present raises their hands, and they are ordered to proceed to the buses. People begin to leave the shelter, and the hall is being filled with disinfectant. But Jean Du and his family are in no hurry to leave. Suddenly, one of the men in the yellow suits asks if anyone has come into direct contact with the monster, and Jean Du, without thinking of the consequences, decides to confess that he has been exposed to the creature's red liquid. The man is immediately isolated from the others, believing that he is infected with some dangerous virus. Already on the buses, people watch a news program, which informs them that the river monster is much more dangerous than previously thought. The creature is a carrier of an unknown virus, which infected the soldier Donald, who lost his arm, and which could have infected everyone around him. American scientists are already doing all the necessary research to learn more about the nature of the virus. All military units that came to the Han River to catch the creature are halting their work because of the danger of infection. Now only special forces and decontamination teams have access to the river. All potentially infected people arrive at the hospital. Namju notices that for some reason the doctors are not wearing masks, even though the virus is supposedly very dangerous. Jean Du is warned that he will have to undergo many tests and is not allowed to eat anything until morning. But the man breaks the ban and opens a tin of canned food at night. Suddenly the phone rings. Jean Du picks up and hears Hyunso. It turns out that his daughter is alive and, according to her, is in a sewer, in the lair of the river monster. 
The girl is frightened and asks her father to hurry to come and help, but after a couple of seconds, the connection is cut off. The family hears Jandu talking to Hyunso and is horrified by the news. Meanwhile, two men in yellow suits disinfect the area around the Han River. Suddenly they see a banknote on the bridge and decide to pull over. One of the men moves closer to the water, picking up the bill, and a moment later he is attacked by a huge mutant. The beast drags the man into a sewer shaft, where quite a few human bodies have already been collected. This is where Hyunso is located. The girl discovers a phone on a new victim, but unfortunately it doesn't work. A policeman arrives at the hospital in the morning and Jandu tries to explain to him that his daughter is alive and must be found urgently. The officer does not believe the naive man and believes that he was only dreaming about his daughter's call, because the girl is registered as a victim. The entire family is trying to prove that Hyunso has indeed miraculously managed to survive. Namil demands that the officer trace the call, and Hippon offers him a bribe, but nothing helps to change the mind of the police. The family realizes that no one can help Hyunso except themselves. Hippon organizes an escape from the hospital and makes a deal with local thugs. The man gives them all his savings and in return gets a truck, a gun, two protective suits, and the sewer layout. On the news, the rest of the family sees their photos and learns that they have been put on a wanted list. Under the guise of a sanitation crew, the family leaves the confines of the restricted area and sets out to rescue Hyunso. They search the sewer systems, but the girl is nowhere to be found. Meanwhile, two homeless brothers sneak into Hippon's store and gather themselves a backpack full of groceries. The brothers leave the store, but suddenly they are attacked by the ruthless monster and carried off to his lair. Hyunso is hoping to be rescued and continues to wait for her family. When she hears the monster approaching, she freezes and tries not to attract its attention. The girl notices two new bodies and approaches them closer. It turns out that one of the brothers, named Seju, survived after all. Unfortunately, the search for Hyunso in the sewer tunnels ends in failure. The family returns to the store to rest and eat. Namju and Namil are once again angry at their helpless and pathetic brother, but Hippon tells the children that Jandu wasn't always like this. The man blames himself for his son's problems and thinks he didn't take enough care of him during his childhood years. He was often away from home, so the little boy hardly ate anything, and once he was beaten, Hippon prohibits the children from bullying their older brother and blaming him for what happened to Hyunso. In the middle of the night, the family notices that the monster is watching them. Hippon cautiously picks up a shotgun and shoots straight at the creepy creature. However, startled by the shot, the monster runs straight to the kiosk and overturns it. Hippon fires over and over again. For a moment it seems that the monster is defeated. The family gets out of the kiosk and notices that the creature is still moving. The men continue to shoot, but the monster escapes and hides underwater. Hippon intends to destroy the monster, but the guns are nearly out of ammunition. Jandu says that he has one last round left and gives his gun to his father. Hippon sends his sons to the truck, while he himself continues to pursue the monster. Suddenly the monster comes out of the water and heads toward Hippon. The man pulls the trigger and realizes that there is not a single round left in the gun. Jandu's mistake cost his father his life. The monster throws Hippon onto the concrete bank with great force and goes underwater. Jandu runs up to his father's body in terror and cannot believe what has happened. Some soldiers are already approaching the shore. Namil and Namju run away from the soldiers in different directions, but Jandu remains with his father. The foolish man is captured by the soldiers and sent to a laboratory. News reports say that the American soldier whose arm was bitten off by the beast died in the hospital, and the two escaped members of the infected family are wanted by the American military and representatives of the World Health Organization. To combat the mysterious virus, Yellow Agent, a chemical weapon developed in the U.S., to combat outbreaks of the virus or biological warfare, is now being used. However, many residents consider the yellow substance extremely dangerous and oppose its use. Namil goes to a telecommunications company employee who promises to trace Hyunso's call and locate her. The employee wonders why the young man has come without Namju, but Namil claims that they are traveling separately. The men manage to figure out where the call came from, but it turns out that the clerk isn't just helping Namil. He lured him into the office on purpose to capture him and hand him over to the authorities. That's why he asked insistently about Namju, because that way he could get a double reward. A whole group of men come after Namil, but the young man manages to cause a short circuit and escape from the trap into the darkness. The exhausted Namil escapes from the police and hides under a bridge. Before he loses consciousness, he manages to send a message to his sister with Hyunso's location. The woman rushes to her niece's aid. She has no luck contacting Namil, so she calls Jandu to tell him that she has found that huge gutter under the bridge. Suddenly the monster appears in front of Namju, and she is ready to fire her bow, but she hesitates again.
A blow from the monster causes the woman to lose consciousness. At the hospital, Jandu undergoes many tests. After learning from Namju exactly where his daughter is, he tries to escape, but the doctors stop him. An American scientist in a protective suit enters the man's room. Jandu tries to prove to him that his daughter is really alive and he even knows exactly where she is. But the American, like everyone else, does not believe Jandu, and merely states that the virus has definitely infected the man's brain. Jandu is prepped for a lobotomy, and in the meantime, he overhears a conversation in which a scientist shares a secret with a Korean doctor. It turns out that no virus exists, and that the soldier, Donald, died of shock during the operation. Jandu begs the doctors to let him go, as he is neither sick nor dangerous. He screams that he needs to find his daughter as soon as possible, but the doctors do not listen to the man and proceed with the operation. Hyunso befriends the homeless boy, Siju. The starving children now dream of what they will eat when they get out. Hyunso promises to get the boy anything he wants. The girl finishes tying the victim's belongings into one rope, which she is going to use to get out of the sewers. She and Siju throw the rope onto a grate, but it proves too short. Soon the monster reappears at the gutter, and the children are forced to postpone their attempts to escape. Jandu is given a lobotomy. The man no longer seems to react to his surroundings. The nurse takes a test from Jandu and, seeing his indifferent expression on his face, calls him a retard. Suddenly, Jandu takes the nurse hostage and puts a syringe of infected red fluid to her neck. He threatens to infect all the doctors if they don't let him leave. Apparently, the lobotomy has cured the man of his dementia, and he now appears to be thinking much better than before. Jandu goes outside and realizes that all this time he has not been in a hospital, but at a special military base. He finds an ambulance nearby and heads toward Hyunso. Meanwhile, Namil wakes up next to a homeless man. The guy sees a lot of bottles near his new acquaintance and gets an idea. The men take a cab and hurry to the bridge under which Hyunso is located. On the way, they make many Molotov cocktail bottles and prepare to fight the monster. People's protests intensify. Numerous demonstrators gather at the restricted area on the Han River to push for an end to the use of the yellow substance. Hyunso comes up with a new plan. She decides to make a quick run around the sound asleep monster, grab the rope, and get out of the gutter. The girl asks Siju to hide and wait for her to bring rescuers, the police, and the military. However, the plan fails. The monster wraps its huge tail around Hyunso and pulls her back to the ground, then rushes at the unfortunate children a few moments later. Jandu is already on the site. He descends the tied rope and notices that one of the clothes belongs to Hyunso. He desperately calls out for his daughter, not yet knowing that he is minutes too late. Suddenly he notices the monster and sees a human arm dangling from its mouth. Jandu rushes after the monster. Namju wakes up, climbs out of the well and sees the monster running away, followed by Jandu on the bridge. At the same time, Namil and his homeless acquaintance arrive at the river. The police disperse the demonstrators on the bank of the Han River. Through loudspeakers they announce that in five minutes the release of the yellow substance will begin and people need to get as far away as possible from the site where it is used. The protesters do not give up and continue to stand their ground, but suddenly they notice the river monster, which is already approaching the shore and is about to attack the crowd. The frightened people run away in panic. The bravest of the policemen comes closer to the water and shoots at the terrifying creature, but eliminating it proves to be very difficult. Jandu is still trying to catch up with the monster and shouts to the policeman not to shoot, as Hyanso might be in its jaws. The officer doesn't stop firing, and Jandu jumps off the bridge into the river, hoping to get to the monster faster. At this point, he is spotted by Namju and Amil, who are also on the lookout for Hyanso. The hideous creature makes its way to the shore, where the decontamination starts. Because of the poisonous gas and the many wounds, the monster temporarily loses consciousness. Jandu finally swims to shore and runs to the debilitated monster. The man opens the huge mouth of the monster and sees his daughter's hand there. Jandu pulls out Hyanso and Siju, who are holding each other. The distressed father tries to revive his daughter, but she shows no signs of life. Jandu, Namju, and Namil mourn Hyanso and cannot believe that she could not survive. The monster comes to its senses and is about to return to the river. The furious Jandu grabs the iron post of a street sign and attacks the monster, while Namil throws Molotov cocktails at the beast. The creature is terrified of the fire and scurries along the shore, trying to escape. The homeless man who helped Namil pours a can of gasoline on the monster, but the guy drops the last bottle of flammable mixture. Namju comes to the rescue, spiking the burning piece of the bottle with an arrow and shooting it right into the monster's eye. Immediately, the monster bursts into flames and, letting out ghastly screams, tries to return to the water. But Jandu does not let the monster escape and stabs it with the iron bar. Having defeated the monster that took his daughter's life, Jandu approaches Siju and tries to bring him back to life. The boy opens his eyes, and Jandu is ecstatic that he was able to save someone. He takes Siju in his arms and decides to take him back to his home. 
A few months later, Jandu is sitting in his now restored store again. He looks into the distance, and suddenly he senses something moving in the darkness. He pulls out his rifle, but soon realizes that he was just imagining things. Inside the store, Siju is sleeping. Jandu prepares dinner and calls his adopted son to the table. The news reports again bring up the Korean virus, which didn't really exist. The boy claims there is nothing good on TV and suggests that they turn it off and focus on the food. The new family continues to dine peacefully in silence. Do you think the characters will have a quiet and happy life now? Or will other mutants appear in the river and continue to terrorize the people? Share your thoughts in the comments, like and subscribe to the channel. See you in the next videos.